Welcome to Game Does Play Games, where we play games while talking game design. Today we're playing Styridon. I, that's how St I pronounce it. Styridon. 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 <laughs> Pixel Nest Studio <laughs> Plus Present Styridon. Yes. I hope is how we pronounce it. Correct. <laughs> so, um, this game is a bullet hell hard type style, like sideways. And um, it is a roguelike. Oh, okay. So is that like the the like pitch for it, basically, like the thing that sets it apart from the other bullet hells? Um, probably considering I don't think I've played a bullet hell that's really been a roguelike before. Um, and also, it's one of the curators I follow on Steam is the roguelike one because I really like that one. So <laughs> that's pretty fair. <laughs> uh, we're gonna jump straight in. All right, so um. Basically, you get a little tutorial that teaches you a few things, and it, there is like some dialogue, and a guy is telling you some things, and then uh, so you're like, "Cool, I'm 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 in this uh, little tutorial, and it, they're teaching me stuff." And once they you know how to shoot, this happens. <laughs> you're inside of the you're inside of the giant ship, and then lasers come out of nowhere, and then this is our plot. All right, so let's like go. that immediately happens like after the tutorial, yep. like it doesn't like go through like a menu interface uh no it goes no you basically learn what to how to shoot and how to move and how to pick <laughs> up weapons and uh that's about it that's kind of fun actually especially because they just throw you into the tutorial immediately once you load up the game for the first time yep um which obviously didn't happen this time because we had to figure out the control scheme and all that jazz but i, 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 I like that and... I, I really yeah. like oh how, yeah baby. how integrated that that like kind of makes the tutorial, especially like bullet hell games. I feel like tends to follow a bit more of the classic route, and they don't tend to mind separating things like that. Um, and it, obviously, it's not that huge of a deal to kind of integrate those two, like the tutorial and the plot together. But I, I don't know. It they, makes it feel more polished. Yeah, I was gonna say they did. Ah, oh, crap. They do it very well. Um, this game is one of the things that, like, the art is beautiful, but one of the things that really stuck out to me was just how smooth it is and how uh, integrated the theme is with the game. The oh. theme being? The theme is like this 80s style, um, like, just space shooter. Um, 80s style is in like, like Nintendo, old Nintendo style games or, or Super Nintendo style games where it was just like, everything was like, you gotta rock out and just like destroy everything in your way. It's, it, that's how the game feels. There's rock music playing the entire time. Just somebody just hammering on an electric guitar the whole time. <laughs> it's like, it's like the bro force of space games. Okay. Okay. That's, I like that comparison actually. Um, okay, so we haven't really talked about design so far yet. Um, it, it, as described, it was a bullet hell. I did get to pick up a power um, up, so I have a plasma gun and I can switch back to my blaster. The game is designed to where you can beat it with the blaster. In fact, there's a challenge for doing so. Oh, okay. Um, and, uh, and Plus 20% score, is that like of your current score? Uh, I think it's it's a multiplier, so it's, you know, from right. here on I'll receive so 20%. So you can, in between each stage, you get options for power-ups that change all the time, but the one constant one always is the plus 20% score. So if you want, if you're just trying to go for a high score, you can sacrifice getting more uh, powerful for a score upgrade. And, and score doesn't do anything other than like I think it's rights. just bragging rights. Huh. It may, I mean, there might be an unlockable. I'm not actually really sure. I I've mean, only played this game for a couple days. I noticed that there's a daily, or maybe it was a weekly challenge. Yeah. So I guess that's probably where that's most relevant. Yeah, most likely. Um, which reminds me a lot of like Nuclear Throne and stuff like that, mm -hmm. which I'm always a fan of. I mean, so, it's pretty popular for randomly generated like action games, I think. Yeah, it, and it keeps the uh, replayability high. Yeah. So uh, if you pause and go to your screen, you'll see how like it'll say bullet, energy, score, attack, etc. Those are all upgrade slots essentially. So um, you can tell by looking at the color what you're gonna kind of get. Yes, that may be a challenge for you. Yeah. Um, but they also do <laughs> specify. So for instance, this one says right next to it, heavy mini rockets, bigger ra uh, radius. So for all heavy weapons, if I have one, this would apply to that. Oh. Um, and but this one, on the other hand, this is just a uh, a defensive. No, it's probably an offensive power. So uh, if I pick these, like no matter what I'm equipped with, these would um, these would apply. So 
Um, honestly, not a huge fan of really any of these, but I've never actually seen the Shockwave one, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a go. And that's basically if an enemy hits you, it's gonna release that Shockwave. An enemy or uh, like asteroids, because mm, okay. there's a lot of them in this game. In between each level, you get that. I really like the the like narrowing of, of the screen like that. It makes it feel very uh, like transitiony. Yes. It, uh, it, it adds a oh, crap, sense of focus to it, um, which reminds me a bit of, if you but you did play it, of uh, Samurai Gun, where oh, yeah. like when somebody died, it would show that, it would have that, uh, like, that narrowing to focus on somebody getting killed. That's a game we've never played on the show either, but... Oh, I would wreck you, that's why. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. I'm not very good at those games. Anyone that's watched our duck game playthrough. Oh god, yeah. And that was me fighting Cujo, no less, and I still suck. Ooh, smack talk. Okay, so I just picked up a super gun and replaced my blaster with it. So now I have two weapons that are kind of versatile. I have like my focusing one right here, which is a very powerful gun. And then, um, but it has ammo, so like I'm out of ammo now. So I'll switch to this oh, one okay. while my plasma gun charges up. Pulling up this gun. Oh, it I'm charges. Using. Yeah. Okay, so now cool. it's like it's reloaded its ammo count. That's kind of nice. And when I'm not shooting, you can see that the line's refilling there. So uh, some guns will have that that idea with them, where they will uh, they have an ammo count essentially um, that takes some time to. Oh my. Oh, goodbye. Oh, crap. Um, yeah, but some, some have like an ammo count, uh, some of them just take, uh, they're not automatic, and so you have to, uh, keep hitting the button, and there's even an upgrade you can pick up where semi-automatic guns become automatic ones, and all it is is convenience, because <laughs> ju it just means you don't have to keep pressing the button over and over again, it's just automatic. Uh, there are bots where you can, like, shoot them, and then they'll fire at the enemies for you, and you can just keep laying them down, so that's pretty cool. There's there's a lot of different weapon upgrades you can choose before. You see bullets, energy, heavy, bots, yeah, contact, no shield. Now, contact are my favorite. I'm the worst with them, but they're probably everybody's favorite. What what makes them special? Um, They're incredibly powerful, but they're all short range, and all contact weapons are like melee weapons. Like, the first <laughs> one I saw was a saw that goes around you, and then I picked up a sword. I, you just this huge sword just comes out of your ship and hits things. Uh, there's a drill, there's a <laughs> lightsaber where you can reflect things. It's very like Outlaw Star, except even more extreme. Yes, precise. I wonder if they were even going for that. <laughs> um, uh, there's a, see this one, a convenience. Keep on shooting after slot. Actually, I've never really seen the good use of that. Huh. But uh, this one right here, energy plus 50% drop and 15 extra damage wow. while using energies. So the, these are the, usually the ones I gun for, but they're because they increase the chances of getting drops for more weapons and the damage is really nice. So um, really good for a plasma weapon like this that shoots multiple attacks because that damage is amplified with each hit, um, I guess is the best way of putting it. So uh, this is gonna be my main gun and if I ever need to, I'll switch to the other one for convenience sake. Is there a sort of like a boss battle at the end of every stage? Yep, every stage has a boss battle at the end of it and um, if you defeat the boss, then you're restored to full health, and you go on to the next level. So there is, there isn't a persistent, um, like the persistent damage thing, which is very nice because the game is already very difficult. <laughs> As bullet health tends to be. Yes. But already this one are, seems to be a little bit more forgiving than most bullet health. Yes, and that's probably one reason I keep coming back to it. Like I'll be like, oh, I'll play a little bit of Sheridan, and I, I end up playing a, a lot of Sheridan. It's, you know, and that's one of the things about bullet health that I've never totally understood. Like, I, I enjoy myself with good old classic bullet health, but I've never understood why um, modern bullet hells are always so incredibly difficult. I feel like it lowers the Shit. barrier of entry. So, 50% uh, of the reason I die is because I'm trying to switch weapons with what's on the screen, and while I'm doing that, I'm getting my buttons confused, and then I get killed. Worse when I'm on a keyboard than even the controller. That's not uh, surprising. I fumble over the keyboard a lot. And that's why I die this time. So how many stages are there? Do each of those like groups represent a stage? Yes. Okay, One, so two, three, the four, first stage, five, there's six, four different types of bosses you can fight. Oh, so and it randomly so chooses it which randomly one. It randomly chooses which one. The next one, there's huh. three. Next one, there's two. And then after that, there's only that one enemy. So I've gotten up to the fourth boss, but I haven't beat him yet. 
I wonder why they chose to not randomly choose those other bosses. Either limited budget or like... That actually honestly was what was going through my head. I'm like, they probably just like had to narrow it down at some point to get the game out. And it's fine. It's like, I rarely get to the big ship anyway, so it's not like I'm really missing out on much. And he's a challenge as it is, so... Yeah, I was going to say, if, if I had to choose any of those like... Any of those groups to have the random generation, I, I would have done the same. Yeah. Because it, it's better to randomly generate the ones that you're going to be facing the most most often. And it, it, in a way, adds its own challenge because, yeah, those bosses look very similar, mm -hmm. but it, they look incredibly similar. I can't actually tell which boss I'm fighting based off the way it looks. I just have to wait till it starts shooting at me and then I recognize its patterns. And because of that, that gives them their own challenge. Hmm. The lower level bosses, yeah, they're not nearly as hard as the level four boss, but there is still a challenge in me having to adapt to how they they attack. Gotcha. Huh. That's so cool. that is, I mean, that's essentially Sheridan right there. Um, and we can try again in the next episode. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I think we're going to do at least a, a few of these. Um, but be sure to vote if you want us to just keep playing this more. Now, is this... Is this full release or is this early access? Full of release. Okay, so nothing's really going to change, but I, I mean, this, this, this kind of game, game is right up playing. our alley. Yeah, we it, we'll uh, keep it did. Okay, so fun story real quick. This was at literally the number one slot of my Steam wish list <laughs> of like 50 games for like months. And then it, I was very happy to, and surprised to see it come out in a humble monthly bundle. Mm -hmm. That was, I just, as I said, a pleasant surprise. So I have not stopped playing it really. Yeah, yeah really I'm making it look a lot easier than it is, <laughs> and it's not easy already. So, yeah, you're, it's this, this is why you're playing it, not me. Yeah. Uh, so, question of the day, I guess. Um, I, I guess we could talk about the um, like the forgivingness of, of the <laughs> game. I couldn't think of a better word, uh, the, but like how it doesn't penalize the player so harshly for failure. Like, That's one true. shot doesn't kill you. Yeah, you do get multiple hits. Even upgrades to increase your health. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I guess the question to you guys is, do you think that's a, a good design? Like, do you think that it's... Do you think it hurts the idea of what a bullet hell is, right? And if so, you know, in what ways is that not good for the overall design of the game? But if you're on the side of you think it's a good thing, uh, how do you think it, it helps the design? And how do you think that maybe, it, like makes the game more accessible to other players. Yeah, cool. The level to entry. Yeah, okay. yeah. Cool, well, thank you for cool. watching, everyone. And uh, be sure to check out the next couple of videos. Vote on that, like us. You already said that, <laughs> yeah. but I'm just saying it again. <laughs> Goodbye. Thanks, thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs>